Hello and welcome to space. Now, if you have a look on this screen, there's a little green dot, and that indicates the presence of an asteroid. Now, if one of those hits our planet, we're in serious trouble. So what can we do about it? We'll find out. But first, some other news from the universe this month. This is the first photo from Gaia as it calibrates itself for a mission to map the Milky Way. The ESA spacecraft is positioned one and a half million kilometers from Earth. German engineers have been testing a new hybrid rocket engine. It could be a cheaper and safer alternative for landing on the Moon or Mars. And the first ever geological map of Ganymede, Jupiter's enormous moon, has just been released, showing detail of the icy and rocky surface. So, what is the real threat from asteroid impact and satellites crashing in space? Let's find out. This was the dramatic moment when an asteroid exploded over the city of Chelyabinsk in Russia 12 months ago. The blast left 1,500 people injured and over 7,000 buildings damaged. It was a, a pretty nasty uh, event. Luckily, nobody was killed. Uh, but um, it just shows the, the sort of force that these things have. There was surprise that nobody had seen it coming, but it wasn't a big asteroid, no more than 20 meters across. In fact, much bigger threats lurk out in space. Just a few days ago, another asteroid 270 meters wide passed near Earth. That kind of object could cause much more damage. In something with a hundred, the size of 100 meters, for instance, which it still isn't very big. I mean, it's just, you know, you're talking about something like that would fit into a football field. Um, and, and, and that could actually uh, completely destroy an urban area in the worst case. So those are the things that we're really looking out for and that we're trying to find ways to tackle. Action to address the asteroid threat is already underway. This meeting earlier in February brought together all the major spacefaring nations to create a framework for action. Last year we were still in a situation that if an asteroid were threatening to impact on our planet, we would not have the process in place to react to it. We made the first step to do that by establishing this group. The group is backed by the United Nations, and while astronomers work to spot new asteroids near Earth, this group decides what to do if one turns out to be a serious threat. So there we will come up with, a, a, say, a threshold of size or energy or something. When would we want to launch a space mission? I think this would start somewhere between 50 and 100 meters, if you want to hear a number in size. But like I say, it's, it's not defined yet. That's exactly one of the tasks of this group to come up with good numbers. There are an estimated 20,000 asteroids with diameters between 100 meters and several tens of kilometers near Earth. Scientists like Alan Harris develop plans for how to stop an asteroid on a collision course with our planet. So one of the main ideas we're considering is to simply hit the asteroid with a spacecraft. So it's a little bit like cosmic billiards. Cue the music and the billiard cues. We want to change the orbit of an asteroid and uh, what we are doing basically is attempting to transfer momentum to it with a spacecraft and that would be something like this. In practice, of course, the spacecraft uh, only ha is only a very small object compared to the asteroid. It has very little mass, the asteroid is very big, so we have to hit the asteroid very hard with the spacecraft. We have, ha we have to get up to a very high velocity with the spacecraft, and we're going to try that now to cause that asteroid to change its track and miss the Earth. Yes, we so we miss the Earth, we save millions of lives. Of course, asteroids aren't the only menace we face. The other is what's known as space debris. It almost certainly won't kill or injure people on Earth, but it could cause havoc amongst our current fleet of satellites. Heiner Klinkrad is Europe's top expert on the matter. 
it's largely rubbish from the space race um, of the 16 to 17,000 objects that we can track from um, ground stations up there. Um, just about 1,000 are operational spacecraft. All the rest are remnants of past spaceflight activities, and more than one half of these objects are, in fact, fragments, fragments from on orbit collisions recently, and also fragments from on orbit uh, explosions. These days, missions are designed not to leave litter behind in space. And to tackle what's already there, engineers are promoting technologies that are similar to those that could be used to push asteroids off course. So the main intention to uh, uh, remediate the situation is removing mass from orbit. This you can do by mounting, for instance, motors on the object and then firing those motors to put a thing to an immediate re-entry. The other more subtle thing is that you artificially increase the drag force on such an object and then the orbit will be slowly lowering over time and finally decay mostly in an uncontrolled fashion. Two conclusions. Firstly, similar space technologies could help deal with space debris and asteroids. And secondly, both issues are being taken seriously. When you compare the risk of debris against asteroids, you can say that the debris risk is more immediate and the asteroid risk is higher. We need to be prepared for this. We need so the next time this happens, it may not be a 20 meter object that explodes in the atmosphere. It may be uh, a 50 or 100 meter uh, lump of iron that comes in. And uh, that you don't, you wouldn't want to let that impact at all. Thankfully, the initial steps to prevent such a disaster movie scenario coming true are now being taken. Now, all year, we're following the Rosetta team as they carry out their groundbreaking mission. Let's see what's happening. A month ago, Rosetta woke up from hibernation, and with 267 days before it puts a lander on a comet, the spacecraft is still 800 million kilometers from Earth, yet close to the hearts of those who control it. It's a mini Rosetta. It's to bring a little luck. Everyone has one, in one form or another, which is nice. When we have contact with the satellite, we have to be here and ready. It's true that it isn't always easy to manage with family and private life. Today, I'm feeling optimistic and I'm telling myself that everything will go well. We've done all the tests, there won't be any surprises and it's going to be fantastic. Dear Rosetta, I hope everything's OK, not too cold, that you don't want to get back under the bed covers because this time we've got to go for it. That's all for now. Watch out for the asteroids, and I'll see you next time.